and welcome, I'm your Code Monkey, and here let's check out the top new games made with Unity on launch in June 25. This one was an interesting month, quite a lot of variety as usual, although some games that looked super interesting also had mixed reviews. The Steam Summer Sale probably also made some games avoid releasing this month, but still, despite that, there were still at least 10 really awesome looking games. The reason why I make these videos is to show you everything the engine can do, the only limit is really just your own skills and imagination, and the variety and the awesomeness of the games shown here really puts that to the test. All of these games are uniquely impressive, so the list is in no particular order, except for the number one game, that is my personal pick of the month. By the way, I've been hard to work on my upcoming free course. It is going to be on making a really nice Lunar Lander game. So it's got a bunch of physics, it's a nice 2D game, it's got sprite shapes, it has all kinds of interesting inputs. It also involves some interesting math to check out the landing detection in order to make sure you land at a right angle and with soft enough velocity. This is definitely going to be a really fun beginner project. Just like my previous free courses, there will be a free version over here on YouTube with all the video lectures and an optional paid premium version with a bunch of nice bonuses like a companion project. And after this one, I'm going to get to work on a course that I've wanted to make for literally years. It's going to be a course all about problem solving. This is an insanely useful skill, but it's also one that is very hard to teach. I've been thinking about how exactly can I teach this super useful skill set for many years, and now I think I finally know a way. So if this is what I'm working on, you can find links to both courses in the description. You can sign up and I'll let you know when it's out. All right, so starting off at number 10 with one that finally came out of early access, it's Soulstone Survivors. This one was in early access for two and a half years and just now hit 1.0. This is one of the better vampire survival likes that actually takes the genre and moves it forward. You walk around the arena, fight off hundreds or thousands of monsters, while also picking up hundreds or thousands of soulstones. The amount of both enemies and items on screen is really insane, and the game also has an insane amount of custom customization and variation. You can make basically endless builds out of over 300 unique skills. You can forge over 100 unique weapons, all of them with different sets. You can unlock characters, upgrade the vast skill tree, take on curses, and master multiple game modes. This is definitely one of those games that spends ages in early access, and by the time that 1.0 comes out, it is packed full of content. If you like this one, then you will definitely get thousands of hours of fun out of this game. I've also mentioned this game several times before, so you might have heard about it. This game is an excellent example of something that I say all the time, which is how players don't care about assets, they just want fun games to play. This game is clearly using a ton of synthy assets, and yet people love it. It's a massive hit. So don't be afraid to use assets in your own games. They've mentioned how they've had over a million players. On Steam, they have 21,000 very positive views. So yep, it's a huge hit, and people love it. Next, here's one that I have no idea how it is so successful. It's Squeak Cross Home Squeak Home. Basically, you play some Picross, and when you win, you get some furniture, like a fridge, and then you can decorate the home for your rodent friend. Go into build mode and use all the furniture you've unlocked. You've got tons of objects, fridges, speakers, couches. There are chairs, tables, TVs, toasters, plants, and really pretty much everything. And on each object, you also have tons of variation, so you really have infinite possibilities. Then you can guide your rodent friend to interact with all kinds of objects, after which you also play some more Picross, unlock some more items and outfits for your rodent, and really just keep solving puzzles and building your nice cozy home. It is very much meant to be a cozy game, so it even has tips and logic assist if you do get stuck. If I had to guess as to why this is so successful, I would say it's probably because it's excellently polished. Every action trailer feels insanely satisfying. All the buttons, all the sound effects, clicks, animations, everything looks super smooth and super cozy. At a glance, this doesn't necessarily seem like the kind of game that the Steam audience would love. However, clearly that is not the case. This one is a hit. It has got over 800 very positive views. And more importantly, it's not just very positive. Those reviews are actually 98% positive, so that's a near perfect score. So perhaps if you've never been into cute puzzle cozy games, then perhaps Perhaps give this one a try, it seems everyone loves it. Next, if all you want is some stylish action, here is Berserk or Die. This one is an action game with some interesting controls. You're in the middle of the screen and enemies come from both left and right. Then you can smash either the left or the right side of your keyboard in order to do all sorts of stylish attacks. The game is really just a joy to look at. It's got some excellent visual effects, excellent pixel art. Now importantly is when I say smash the keyboard, I really mean smash the keyboard. Basically, the more keys you press, the wider your attack. And you can also charge up specials to deal some devastating damage damage to your enemies. After every day, you can use a shop to either heal and prepare for the next day. Choose from a wide array of fighters using all kinds of weapons to achieve maximum carnage. The game is out now with 300 mostly positive reviews. The main negative seems to be just the simplicity, but if all you want is just some stylish action with little button complexity, then this game is for you. Up next, let's run a wholesome shipping business in Ship Inc. This one is a cozy job simulator game where you are a packaging employee whose task is to grab all the items, pick the right size boxes, and then get it all packed safely and ready for shipping. It's all 
about organizing and packing things correctly, you basically get a list of items that should go on each box, along with the numbers, stickers, and so on. Put all the items on the right box in order to get it ready for shipping, and then grab all the boxes and find the most efficient way of placing them on your truck in order to send them to their destination. And the better you become, of course, the more difficult are the other. You also have upgrades to improve your office, you can get some better bubble wrap or packing peanuts, you can even apparently upgrade your duct tape, although I'm not sure what that would do. Oh, and naturally there's a fun cat that jumps inside of your empty boxes, of course. Personally, I love the art style on this game, nice, clean, cartoony style, very much reminds me of a lot of Flash games that I loved as a kid. And despite being a cozy game, you can also choose to make it challenging. There are three different game modes, chill, normal, and rush hour, for those of you that do want to challenge. The game is out now with 300 very positive views. Next, here's an awesome tactical game that just left early access, it's Cyber Knight's Flashpoint. I'm pretty sure I also covered this one in one of these list videos when it entered into early access. Now it's fully out after almost three years. This one is a turn-based tactical RPG with a unique heist planning strategy. It is super detailed, you've got tons of characters, stats, and even lots of lore. You can build your squads with all kinds of interesting futuristic weapons and abilities. The main goal here is heist, not necessarily upfront combat, so pick a mix between offensive and stealth abilities and weapons. It features both precisely generated levels and a crafted storyline. Choose your missions and influence the outcome of the world itself, with factions rising or falling depending on your actions. One review describes the game as Cyberpunk meets XCOM, and yep, that's it. It's got a ton of updates during its time in early access, so it is, once again, full, packed with content for you to play. It is out now with 1300 very positive views. Up next, here we have a relaxing, gorgeous game titled Cast and Chill. This might just be the most gorgeous pixel art I've ever seen. The game looks absolutely stunning. This one is a cozy fishing game. You start off from scratch at the store with just a basic fishing rod and some lures, then go out into the gorgeous sea and just throw the line. If you do it right, then subfish will bite, then you can fight it in order to capture it and add it to your collection. You get some gold and you can use it to upgrade your equipment, then go out again, catch more and more rare fish. There's plenty of spots to pick from, all of them very peaceful with different types of fish. There's over 50 of them for you to discover and catch. And one interesting thing about this game is how you can play in either active or passive mode. In active mode, you actively try catching the fish, whereas in passive mode, you just keep the game open on a second monitor and check back later to see what you caught. Even though this game seems to be a bit slow for the same audience, it is still doing extremely well. It already has 1500 reviews at 93% positive, so that's a huge hit and people love it. Up next, here we have an interesting RTS that seems straight from 90s, it's called Modular. It's got the style of 90s RTSs, so you've got some nice sprites, some low frame rate animations, as well as of course some funny, intentionally cringy and low quality FMVs. Then in terms of gameplay, it's actually quite interesting. It's an adaptive organic RTS, so you don't exactly control individual units or spawn them, instead you control this weird alien creature where your body is your army. You can grow your body by just placing more and more connected pieces, and then you can also split up, merge or mutate pieces and organs in order to fight in different ways. The various organs are what gives you different abilities and units. The game features a nice story based single player campaign, again with all of those fun FMVs, as well as nice multiplayer with up to 4 player in either PvP or co-op. The game is out now on only access. This one is a pretty niche genre, so it only has 50 reviews, but they're almost all positive. So if you like 90s RTSs, then try this out. Hopefully by the time it comes out of Early Access, it's going to be a really solid game. Then we have a sequel to a great indie game. Here we have Lost in Random, The Eternal Die. Now this game, this one is now a fast-paced action roguelite set in the same whimsical world of random. You play as the queen and her die companion, fight all kinds of enemies in some tight arenas, battle huge challenging bosses with various stages, and of course the game has random just like name implies, but it's also very much a game based on skill. You can heal one of four unique weapons, unleash powerful card abilities, use relics, and roll your trust companion for extra buffs. If you die, go unlock some weapons or powerful upgrades and try again. The visual style is the same as the excellent original. It's such a unique style, it's some gorgeous dark fantasy. This one is out now with 300 very positive views. The response seems to be very positive, even though it's a different genre from the original. And then here we have a game with a fun hand-drawn art style. It is called Silly Comrades. Personally, I love how this one looks. It is so unique. Really, the hand-drawn stuff makes it stand out right away. It's a two-player co-op shooter with some ever-changing gameplay. You play as a damaged robot, so that means you've got some defects which actually change gameplay. Maybe one time you deal some friendly fire, or maybe you can't actually stop moving. Maybe you have some shaky aim, or maybe every second shot knocks you back. There's lots of fun inventive effects, all of them greatly modify the gameplay. And of course, lots of co-op mechanics as well. You can repair your friend or break 
break them. The game features a four episode story campaign. It is funny and challenging. You are fighting against the evil robo government. It is only a local co-op, but you can play with a friend using Steam Remote Play. It is out now with 40 reviews, all of them 100% positive. And at number one for my personal pick of the month, here we have the one that grabbed me right away based on its description. It is called Nightmare Frontier. And basically the description, this one describes itself as a tactical extraction looter. So basically XCOM with loot extraction mechanics. I am definitely immediately interested upon hearing that. You fight in some tactical turn-based strategy combat. Then between each battle, you can make your way through the map node by node. The map is actually infinite, but the deeper you go, the harder the fights. If you go too far and you die, if so, then you just lose everything. So you have to push just far enough to get some great loot and then extract back into safety. That's a really nice risk reward mechanic. The combat arenas, those are all tight and claustrophobic, allowing you to make all kinds of fun combos with knockback mechanics. Positioning is super important. Visually, the game looks really great, super high production value. If you're into XCOM likes, then this one seems like a great one. And the mix of turn-based strategy with looter extraction elements sounds really awesome. The game is out now in early access and currently has 100 very positive views. All right, so that's 10 awesome new games made with DMT launch in June 25. I hope this list helps you see how DMT engine is capable of building anything. The only limits are really just your own skills and imagination. Check out my own game, Dinky Guardians, and I hope you enjoy playing.